Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and I'm down here today in my reptile room, in my snake room, and I have an infestation that's been driving me crazy for probably two months. It started with, it actually started when I was upstairs in my kitchen and there's this little gnat kind of buzzing around, you know, they come in your house plants and somehow they got down here in my snake room and they multiplied like crazy and they're going through all my racks. I actually opened a tub the other day and I had a, like a whole Whole swarm of these gnats fly out and I'm pretty sure it's like a fungus gnat and they're pretty they're pretty harmless they don't really bother anything but but even the, even recording on my camera I can see like three of them crawling on my camera I actually hung up some fly paper two strips of fly paper and those things within a couple weeks they're completely coated with gnats these things are just driving me crazy they're multiplying like mad and they're all over my snake room and today I'm gonna show you some of the approaches on how I'm gonna could try to get rid of them and what I've done so Okay, so far. the first approach I'm going to take to get rid of these crazy gnats is I'm going to change the bedding in my snake tubs. And I've been through quite a few different types of bedding and right now what I'm using is this Pro Coco coconut husk it's a coconut husk chip and one of these blocks I'd say expands probably four times it's amazing how much this will expand and this will probably do well it'll do a lot of tubs <laughs> as a matter of fact out in my retakes one block will fill the entire closure for my reticulated pythons it'll do a little bit more than a bow tub so these really expand a lot and I actually buy them by the pallet by I think it's 110 blocks in a short pallet you can buy it straight from Pro Coco. It costs you a little bit over a thousand dollars but you're paying about ten dollars a block versus if you got one of these blocks on Amazon you're paying about twenty five dollars a block and the thing I really like about it is they last a really long time. I got a gnat on my nose. I mean these gnats are driving me crazy and especially since I went through and I watered everything and gave everyone you know the the moisture in the substrate. It seems like every time I add moisture to the substrate I get an explosion of these gnats and, and I have a tub down here that I opened the tub and I had a whole swarm of gnats fly out. And I was like, all right, I gotta do something. And what I did is I actually changed it over to paper towels, got rid of all the substrate. And I just looked in there now and there wasn't a single gnat in that tub. So then I started thinking, hmm, maybe I need to go through and get rid of all my substrate just in the short term, hang up a bunch of fly paper and see if that approach actually uh, at least just cuts back on them. Cause right now they're, they're just over overwhelming I have gnats all over it is driving me crazy so let's take a look at some of these snakes and some of the setups that I have and what I've changed okay to. so the first thing I want to show you is kind of the setup that I have been using for quite a while it's the the coconut husk chip and it really works really well to absorb uh, all the the mess if they go to the bathroom if they pee in there it's it's pretty much absorbed and they don't really it doesn't really smell it absorbs all the smells and then if they go to the bathroom room and leave you know big chunks it's really easy to spot clean it's really easy for the snake to climb on it gives them some grip so they can really use their body to to feel really secure in the tub that's what I really like about it and it's pretty much what I use in all of these and you can see some of them don't really have that many gnats some of them don't have any at all that one doesn't have any but some of them are really, there's so many gnats and some of them, it's just pretty incredible. And you can really see on the lighter snakes, you know, I don't see a whole bunch in most of them, but I opened one tub the other day and it was an incredible amount. This, this guy is, I don't know what this guy is doing. It's kind of acting weird. But usually on the white snakes, you can see all the little gnats. And then, you know, so far I've just been going through some of these tubs and it doesn't look like... I have that many gnats in most of these tubs. This one you can see some on the side and mostly it seems like in the back uh, kind of, usually what they do is they go to the bathroom in the back and it seems like right where they go to the bathroom where they have the chunks that's where most of the gnats seem to multiply. It's, it's kind of weird. And this one doesn't really have any. So I actually opened this tub down here just yesterday and there's like there's like a whole swarm a whole infestation yeah you know, I'd say there's probably a hundred gnats that would just kind of float out of the tub into the air it's incredible you know what I did is I got rid of all the substrate sprayed it down with F10 put some paper towels and look there's not a single gnat 
on this snake. It's pretty incredible. It went from a total infestation to none at all. So that's, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of going through all my tubs and getting rid of all the substrate, going to paper towels just for the short term. And I have some fly paper up here. Look at this fly paper. It is pretty incredible. Look at how many gnats are on this fly paper. It is really, let's see if I can get a, a good focus and a close up on this. Look at all those gnats. It is just incredible. And that's only after a couple weeks. And I have another one over here in the corner. <laughs> Both of them are completely covered with, with these little tiny gnats. It is really just pretty incredible. If I can get my focus right, but they're both pretty much exactly the same as far as how many gnats that I have on that fly paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of getting rid of all the substrate, going to paper towels in all my tubs and all my racks, and then probably I'll hang multiple fly strips. I'm thinking maybe three or four over here, three or four over there, and then uh, hopefully it'll get these gnats under control. So one of the big issues that I have in this room as far as, you know, using any kind of an insecticide or, a, or, you know, like a fog or something like that, I actually considered it. But the problem is, is I have several frogs. I have a pixie frog and four Pac-Man frogs. And I'm not sure how sensitive my frogs are going to be to like an insecticide. The other thing I have down in the bottom is a little colony of dubia roaches. And my dubia roaches are for my tarantula that I have upstairs. And then also up here I have some uh, mealworms and some superworms mixed together and I've been using those to feed my gecko. I have a couple leopard geckos that I feed. So, so you don't really want to bomb with an insecticide when you have insects in the room and then the frogs that are pretty sensitive. So I'm kind of at the mercy of what I can actually use as far as, you know, kind of the, the manual, as far as the traps and changing out the substrate. So typically when I go through and I change out the substrate, I mean, it's a pretty big job to go through and change all the tubs, you know, get rid of the substrate and change it with paper towels. And what I'll typically do is I'll go through and, and, and go through just kind of one by one and empty out the substrate. And I'll probably do like, you know, just a few rows tonight and then a few rows in the morning and kind of break it up so, you know, it's not really overwhelming. And that's, you know, especially with a room with is this big with all these tubs, you know, I got all my rats over here, all my snakes over here. And, and if I decide to do something that's really big that affects the whole room, what I typically do is take it little section at a time. It's, it's a lot easier, you know, just to, to come down here for like half an hour, do a little bit of work, you know, half an hour once a day versus you know spending half the day going through and changing all my substrate but these gnats <laughs> they're driving me crazy let me tell you the other thing I don't like about the coconut husk is if you take a look at this they get it in their water so that's you're kind of going around checking the water bowls changing the water I'd say at least every two or three days but the the problem is if you switch to a paper substrate uh, a paper substrate usually doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, absorption characteristics to it so if they, they make a mess it doesn't really get absorbed and the smells you can definitely smell a little bit more on paper towels so if I switch everything to paper towels typically what I would do is I would go through all my tubs at least probably you know preferably every day uh, pr at least every other day and you're yeah, I'd say at least you know if you're doing every other day I'd say at least two or three snakes will go to the bathroom and you have to change them out. And the other thing is, if you have really big snakes, for example, some of these really big ones and they go to the bathroom on paper towel, then they really, really make a mess. And it's, it's I'd say it's a lot more of a mess than a little, uh, you know, a smaller snake. And if, so, if a snake like this makes a mess on paper towel, it pretty much soaks the whole thing and you have to go through and, you know, scrub the tub and change the towel. And it, let me tell you, I've seen some people with reticulated pythons on paper towel and they're constantly chasing the reticulated pythons, cleaning up, you know, the snake pee <laughs> every, every few days. It's, it seems like it's a lot more work. It's definitely less expensive 
expensive with the paper substrate, but it's it's definitely you're chasing tubs all the time trying to clean up after these snakes. Okay, so the war against the gnats has officially begun. <laughs> I'm going to put all my effort into getting rid of these little guys, and let me tell you, if they've been plaguing me for a couple months, and, and I didn't really, you know, it wasn't really that bad at first, and if you watch some of my other videos, especially if I'm doing stuff on the computer, I bring my little laptop here, and I put the camera up on a tripod, and I'm showing you like Morph Market and some of the snakes, or some of the videos on YouTube, you know, some of the, like the ball python worshippers, stuff like that. You'll see, uh, if I turn on all the lights and I have my laptop, it seemed like all the gnats were attracted to my screen, and you'd see little gnats running around the screen as I'm like showing off Morph Market or something, and that's when they were, they're kind of bothering me a little bit, you know, making some videos, and you can obviously see I have a problem with gnats. As a matter of fact, I watched a lot of uh, ball python breeders and they have all this fly paper hanging in their room and I'm like what is all that fly paper and I've been breeding snakes for years and I've never had a problem with these gnats until just recently and all of a sudden I just had an explosion and they're just driving me crazy hopefully between the fly paper and changing the substrate I'm going to try it for a few weeks maybe a month and see if I can totally eradicate these gnats so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video